Good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. It's a spring day, a little breezy out here in my backyard. I have my friend Kevin Kittle, welcome. And uh, we decided, this was actually an idea that was prompted by Ted Monk. And it was, what do I carry in my writer's bag or my typing bag? And this is something that maybe a lot of people do, especially if you have small typewriters that you like to carry places. You have a bag of accessories, maybe paper or whatever. Well, we've been doing this a lot, a few years, <laughs> right? A few years. And Definitely. we've sort of developed our own writer's bag, and it's not all necessarily writing related. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not necessarily even typewriter yeah. related. But we have both of our bags full of stuff, and we thought it would be fun to share that with you. So stay tuned. Well, okay, so <clears throat> this is my bag, and actually it has a JVC tag. Uh, courtesy of someone I know <laughs> but anyway yeah so this is my bag uh, it has a shoulder strap and uh, I believe you brought one yourself oh, yes I did yes. but my bag which doesn't have a JC no it's a Samsonite though. but it's a Samsonite it's, it's a very good name a very good name and do you carry a shoulder strap with yours I do I have that because okay. I don't always use it but I do have a shoulder strap tucked oh, inside okay. here so that if well, I need it. Since you're the guest, I'm gonna let you go first. Show, show us a little bit what's in there and I'll, well, I'll go kind of go back and forth here. Since we're doing writing and typewriting, yes. is that one of the things that I can do with this bag, and you can do it probably with yours also, but if you have an ultra portable, you actually, ah. the very first thing you might need is a typewriter. <laughs> exactly. So in here then I have, and this is one of the ones that I'd use a lot in traveling. This is a, uh, Adler Tippa 1, oh. and it is one of the lightest weight ultra portables. Um, and what I also like about this, because a lot of the writing I do is on postcards, is that uh, it has a script typeface. Oh, and it's a purple ribbon. With looks. a purple ribbon. Oh, I can I see like, the ink on the typeface. Yeah, yeah. And so, <laughs> that, you know, so that makes it for a nice yeah. uh, a typewriter. Now, obviously, you know, you don't always carry uh, uh, this typewriter when you're going out, a portable sure, typewriter, sure. so you may end up using right. a different typewriter and one that you can't fit in the bag. <laughs> and so we'll bring it over here from the side. Oh, yes. Is the uh, Smith Corona Power Writer. Yes. Which now, is a true portable yes. typewriter. It's, it's like a, it's a Smith Corona electric, but it takes a power cord, but. But. It's it, also battery operated. It's also battery, so it is a portable electric yeah, typewriter. Yes, and it's a rechargeable <laughs> battery, so when you plug it in, it recharges it, uh, and it <laughs> runs just fine on the battery, and you get a good imprint for about two hours long from a full charge. Wow. But then you really need to plug it in. And, um, of course, then this one has become, you know, we had talked about the Power Rider a while back. This one has become now, this is the Atomic Power Rider. Yes, and we'll show the little features that you did on this a little bit later. Yeah. yeah very so cool. The Atomic Power Rider. I like Rider. it. Yes. I like it. Okay, so um, my bag is big enough to carry uh, my Royal Mercury if I chose to. Uh -huh. But yes. the reason why it's not in the bag is that my bag is stuffed with junk. I mean, I have a lot of stuff, more stuff than I need, but that's part of the whole thing about, you know. Well, that's the reason you bring a typewriter bag yeah. and you don't fit the all the stuff you need in the typewriter case. Right, and, and this actually has its own bag about the same size that I usually carry it with. Right. You know, so I have usually two bags typically, but I'll slide this out of the way. And so since you've already pulled something out, let's see, I'm going to unzip this thing and we'll just see. Okay, well, um, so this came in my bag just this morning, <laughs> thanks to somebody. Yeah. And this, these are uh, postcard print papers for Canon Selfie uh, digital color printers. So this is dye sublimation right. printing. We have portable battery powered Canon printers that we can take photos with our smartphone and print color postcards. And then the paper's thin enough, you can roll it through a typewriter, even a small portable typewriter and you can type on the back side and so you can do postcards out in the field when you're traveling so very cool and that is leads me with what I have in my bag oh, which yes. is this is my postcard bag in my bag oh okay let's see it let's so this is it. exactly the same thing so in here I have some printed postcards from the selfies right and um, and that's what's right here on the front so this is one I did recently oh yes yeah. so, so this is the uh, that's a very nice picture and of course, it has the area on the back for typing or writing your 
postcard a note and your address and everything. That's a nice picture. Yeah. Yeah. So that, and then in that too, uh, this bag here is just full of postcards because that's one of the things that we do on a, a traveling trip is we write postcards. So we have, uh, of course, New Mexico yes. postcards. Yeah. So when we're traveling and we see people in other parts of the country, uh, we give them a postcard from New Mexico. Yes, yes. And then we pick up postcards from wherever we might be. And so that's one of the big things that we do. And what is nice about the Canon uh, printed ones is that they do fit in almost any typewriter because there's a fairly thin paper. But when you get into some of the uh, store-bought ones, printed yeah. ones, such yeah. as like this one here, it's a thicker cardstock. Yeah, it doesn't bend very easy. It doesn't bend very yeah. easy. And unfortunately, in the Adra Tippa, uh, it, it doesn't feed very well. No. But it feeds very well because of the Smith Corona is the bigger platinum. Oh, yes, on the and power it, writer. On the yeah. power writer, it does really the well. The atomic power the writer. The atomic power writer. Yeah. And so, and like this one here is like one of the thickest, and it will actually print on that. And that's where, of course, if you get into that point where, okay, the typewriter can't handle the thicker postcard, but I really want to use that postcard. Okay. So this is where Joe's idea went oh, years yes. ago, yes. he brought yes. it up to. Yeah. And that is, we have these Avery labels. Ah, uh, yes. And then we write on there, so this is in another packet, it's full of the labels. Ah, uh -huh, yes. And then we can actually print. Yes. And it fits on a postcard, so oh, we yes. made these. Very good. And you can actually buy these Avery labels come the right size uh, right from the factory. You right. don't have to cut them, right. uh, even though you could if you yeah. wanted to. Yep. They fit on like half of the postcard, like the the writing, the part you write a letter on, they'll fit right, right there. And then what you do, if you need to uh, then also put an address label on it, then I, you, know, you pick your standard size. Use address label. Address right. label. And you put, can type on those too. And you can type on those too. Or handwrite it. Or handwrite it, yeah. Like that. And then the only thing I throw in here that's maybe a little addition is that I've got a list of friends and family of people that I want to remember, oh, I might want to send them a postcard. Okay, nice. And so, of course, I add and, to that. And that's typed on... Hotel Congress stationery from Tucson, Arizona. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, a little notepad that we picked up from there, and I had to throw that in there, so I typed that. Uh, and uh, when I actually did the list, I uh, <laughs> used my... And, and that was the trip that we went down to the shop, to the Goodwill, to, yes. to pick up the, the, ideal, the ideal... The ideal... The ideal... Typewriter. What is it? it? What is that? Number two. Number two or something. Yeah, yeah I can't yeah. remember. Yeah, the old, the antique from 1908. Right, right. Ideal, because we didn't want to risk that being shipped from uh, Goodwill, and so that's where we, we, we picked up Okay, those. well, so now what I have in my bag is um, sometimes with even small typewriters, you want a rubbery pad so that it doesn't slide around on the table. And this rubbery pad is, um, I think it's either a 32nd or a Ooh. 64th of an inch thin. Yeah, it's not even really thick, thin. it's that's, thin. Yeah. And then I happen to have salvaged a piece of this felt from a something and I, I, I sort of use it with it if I want to but uh, anyway it makes a nice little easy to store in your travel bag typing pad just to keep it from slipping yeah that's nice and the one that I have um, came from uh, Joe's wife Andy oh, yeah. and she gave me some uh, drawer liner yes. material yeah this stuff is kind of squishy and it's grippy it doesn't slide you know? yeah. yeah and it works really well because even though the power rider has full length rubber feet on it and it's a heavy machine it still wants to it wants be to slide. swirly yeah slide because so, of the power of it oh the power exactly right. so you put that on there and it really prevents it from slipping it's really yeah. nice it does some sound absorption right, right? Uh, not nearly as much as that felt that Joe has. Well, so now I'm looking in my bag, and I think we're getting into the the topic of paper. Ah. And and so what <laughs> to do this? Uh, I have to show you why I can't put my typewriter in my bag. <laughs> it's because I'm carrying like an uh, like <laughs> almost a ream. Almost a ream. It really is. Okay, so uh, my my prop. These are prop cigars, but they're actually real cigars. Um, so. We'll start on the top here, maybe. This is newsprint paper oh, wow, nice. that I got from uh, the art store, and it all started with this stuff. I got a package in the mail, and it was wrapped in this light-colored paper. It's like a packing paper. Oh, yeah. And like, it's like, like newsprint paper, right? Yeah. But if I found out, I had an older pad of paper, of newsprint paper, it was an art pad, but I noticed it said coarse. Coarse. Huh. And then I went down to the art store and discovered there's fine 
newsprint paper. Oh. And that's what this is, but the fine paper I could only buy in like 16 by 24, a big tablet. So I bought the tablet and I cut it down. So, so is this similar to like what, what people would call like butcher paper? Too? Yeah, like but well, butcher paper I think is more white colored. Yeah, the real butcher yeah, paper. Yeah, but this is, is yeah. pretty close to real newsprint paper. Right? Wow. Yeah. So anyway, I cut this down to like maybe six by eight or whatever. I keep a pack of it, and I even the wrinkled stuff from the packing I kind of like to type on it sometimes. And then I'll go through some of this, and I'll let you do your paper. Oh sure. This is a, a little bit of the uh, Greg Ruled stenography paper, and these are ideal for typing on with double line spaced. Double, but not one and a half. Right, right. This is for double line spacing, so almost any typewriter you can use this on and stay within the lines. Uh, the only caveat is you have a red line down the middle, but actually that red line helps you to roll the paper in the typewriter because if you line oh, up yeah. the two red lines between the front and the back side it's pretty well lined up well you could then also too using that you can make two columns you can make two columns if you're doing like two column journalism yeah, you have yeah. two columns you know and Okay, so I have so much paper here, I should probably let you talk a little bit. Well, I've got a lot of paper, too. And that's <laughs> obviously... Is he going gonna... to outdo me? I don't think so. <laughs> but uh, that, that's the whole idea that when you have... Uh, uh, your, you need paper for your typewriter. I mean, there's right, no doubt. Exactly. Or writing. So mine's... Uh, yeah. Not Maybe mine's only a half a ring. <laughs> yeah. But um, so coming right here on top, yeah. what I have is my... I call it my haphazard journal. Oh, nice. And, and uh, this is coil, or not, what is it called? Uh, comb binding. Comb bound. So I'll show you the binding here. It's that comb binding that he does. He has a punch and the whole thing. Right, and I, I did that. And I chose this size because it was a convenient size because most of the paper I use is uh, this um, erasable bond. Oh, okay. And it was in a uh, 11 by... 13. So not to show the details, but just to get a sense of yeah. the color from that purple ribbon and the it's right. script. Right. Script, right. That's yeah. from the Adler. Yep. The, the Adler. That's a nice looking. Yeah. And so, uh, and then what I do is that uh, when I type on it, and it has been pretty haphazard. Um, yeah, helicopters. It's the military industrial complex. That's right. Exactly. And so then when you finish up, I've already pre-punched is the right oh, word, yes, I guess, yeah. punched ahead of time, nice. the, uh, the paper, and then I type on it, Right. and then that way I you know, I don't blow go you, into the margin. You know, I have a yeah. disc binding setup, you know, for little discs, yeah. and the problem with it is the chads on the end are broken, right. and it gets wrinkled and torn up when you roll it through a typewriter, and I like the slots that are that are reinforced with a paper on the outside. The only thing is a little more, a little more uh, work involved in in right. binding it in the comb. It's it's not as quick. Yeah. yeah. So what you have to do if you're doing it by hand, you just have to pull this out and take off the back cover. Okay. And, and then, then thread that thread in. It, okay. Or if you've got multiple sheets and you haven't done it for a while, you just use the machine. Okay. And do it. So it, it works out. It, yeah. I like it. It works pretty well. And then of course with that, I've got you know a whole stack of this uh, paper that goes with it. The uh, blank sheets. Oh yes, right. Okay. Already, already, already bound. Already bound. Or, or punched. Punched. I mean. Yeah. And, and this uh, is the erasable bond. And it's the erasable bond. I like the erasable bond because uh, you and I both are the same way. We don't like mistakes. And no. when we make mistakes, we like to correct them. And the erasable bond cr uh, erases really easily with a pencil right. uh, with type style eraser. So then, and then the other things I've got in here, because we're doing, you know, letter writing on the road, we've got some envelopes yeah, and, and stuff. And cool. then miscellaneous. Now, one thing I do throw in here that's... Uh, maybe a little bit unusual and I found this book because I'm trying to become a better writer is that um, I threw in a few pages out of this book that have a writing prompt on it. Oh okay. And so, so you can type your prompt or your you response. start this and this yeah. is a you know, first line or two of a story okay. and then you make a story out. Oh nice. So that's kind of a fun thing to do and then and then like like what you have in there I've got um, miscellaneous types of paper that yeah. I picked up here and there. Some that we'd consider more of scratch type paper. Right. Some that be better. Some I that I've the, gotten from Joe. I think Joe. the best writing is done on on, on scratch paper. Because yeah. there's no <laughs> affectation about it has to be perfect writing because the paper is such good quality. Right. <laughs> and then I've got some other projects here. I've got some old postcards that I need to answer. Oh, okay, yeah. And, and stuff like that. Oh, and, that's and, a whole other topic for me. But yeah. Well, so, so for me, just to continue on the same theme, I have some pre-printed 
Um, these are, I think you might have given these to me, in fact. So this is paper that has, uh, it's already been creased or pre- Pre-folded for fitting pre in an envelope? Yeah, they, they become their own envelope, actually. Oh, wow, so, no, I don't think I gave yeah, you can, these. Yeah, you can, maybe I think one of the members of our typewriter group gave them to me. Yeah. But you can, um, you know, type on the back on the inside and then you fold it and this becomes your address oh that's cool and so that's kind of a cool thing right those like are neat that. yeah so i have a whole pack of those and then um construction paper because construction paper makes for good backing sheets yes if you have a typewriter that doesn't have a new platen and i and these are nine by twelve and i cut them down to letter size so they don't have the overlapped border and then um this is that uh Oh yeah, the letter writing paper you get from Walmart. I forget the name of it. It's just kind of it's nice. It's thinner than printer paper, and this is English Bond Fox River. I got this from Bill Barons, one of my correspondents. Right, some nice paper. This is that same grid paper that, oh, you, yes. that you have you a couple me... sheets of. This yeah. engineering the Ampad engineering paper. Uh, it's fun to type on that. Now, one thing that I add to my uh, writing stuff is a couple of things that aren't really uh, paper. But I have in here because I occasionally like to just practice typing. Cause oh, yeah. Just to keep your hands limber. Yeah. And this booklet is from uh, Underwood. Well, it's from the International Typewriting Championship Contest oh. from 1925. And this was the book that they wrote from. Called The Flapper. Called The Flapper. And, oh, and I see, let me show a close-up. So I see there is word counts along the column, the margin, yeah. right? So, very cool. And the story itself is kind of meandering. It's really, <laughs> it, it, you're going, well, it, it's well, only worth, it's only <laughs> worth the typing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, it's not, it's a, but it's kind of an interesting thing, fun to do, to, to practice on. And then the other thing that I do that's related to writing, but it's not necessarily uh, creative writing or typewriting, is that I've been, trying to improve my handwriting, which okay. leads into some of the stuff that I carry. Right. And one is that I'm using these uh, Spencerian handwriting oh. practice books. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, very cool. And like almost everybody else, too, I'm not as dedicated as I should be right. to getting better, but I have done practice oh, on you've it. done quite a few. Yeah. And, uh, and there's, well, this is only book one out of five. <laughs> <laughs> so, but related to that, and then we'll get into uh, yeah. what you might have, too, is that one of the things that we bring with our typewriter are other writing office supplies. Right. Because we are both office supply junkies. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and so with that, to uh, supplement what we need, and obviously we need, very often, we need <laughs> a, 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 an eraser pencil. Yeah. Or eraser strips. Yeah. Tabs. Or, yeah. Tabs. Or... Correction tape. Correction tape, we have that. <laughs> and then often, you know, we even though we can use the typewriter for ruling, we may need to measure something, so yep. we have a ruler, and then uh, a pencil in here, and of course I've got, you, if you have a pencil, you have to have yes, a course, pencil sharpener, pencil sharpener. Yes. which looks like looks an like ink, a ink, ball, ink ball. And then of course, since we're using uh, dangerous equipment, we have to have the safety scissors. Oh, safety scissors, that's right. You, you know, want to make sure you don't. Make sure that. There is a sharp edge here, but be careful. Be careful, yeah. that's right. And then uh, uh, sundry things, you need a pen, so this is a very nice ballpoint pen, which mm -hmm. says written in stone, which we're trying to do, write something right. that's worthy of that. Yeah. And then multicolor pencil, oh, yeah. pen, pen and all that. Yeah. And then both Joe and I, we enjoy. So with me, I brought, I have three fountain pens. Of course. And one has a stub nib, which we both really enjoy yeah, that. The, the Pilot Plumix. Yeah. The best $15 fountain pen probably. Around. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. It's, we really enjoy that. Yeah. And it takes cartridges, which we have yes. extra cartridges <laughs> right here. In various colors. Which when you're on the road, you don't want to really mess with bottle ink. No, that's I mean, true. It's, it's, right. it's, even though I do have a bottle ink pen here, but this is because this is an Estabrook antique. Oh, yeah. And it also, because of the Spencerian, it has a flexible nib, oh, so, so I can try yeah. to do that. And then this is just a regular, inexpensive fountain pen with normal point okay and uh, very nice so we have that and the last thing I have in this thing <laughs> is very important because oh, yes, you have yes. to have yeah. if you're gonna do anything you have to have your Swiss Army knife oh that's right look with a credit card size. it's a credit card size which of course it's, yeah yeah so it 
you can backlight it, you can see all the little things in there, right? Yeah, just you have a knife. It's like a nail file. Nail file, and tweezers. Tweezers. And, and it does actually have a pin. It has a pin, okay, yeah. And then you uh, you move the little uh, oh. door, and it has a pair okay, of scissors pair of you can pull. And, and so, and it has a ruler on the back oh, for yeah. a straight edge. So yeah. you have to have your Swiss Army knife. <laughs> That's true. That's very good. Well, I actually left my pouch, my pin pouch in the office. I don't always uh, carry it, but uh, let's see. So some of the things I carry, okay, you mentioned tools. So this is a Leatherman tool. Oh, yeah. And this is the Leatherman charge. They don't make these anymore, but the nice thing about this is it's, uh, well, you have um, scissors, which are really nice for, uh, uh, you know, cutting, Cut, yeah, all whatever, things, right? Yeah. Right? And then it has a pouch. It's just nice to have a handy tool. Screwdriver, because even with, as well as we try to maintain our typewriters, there's always some kind of maintenance problem oh, or yeah. whatever. And this gets to <laughs> the topic of, you don't need that. Um, so this is a little ribbon kit that part of it is what I got from Bob Marshall. Mm. And, and oh, yeah. he sells these in a little tin, a little plastic tin. But I keep his little speedy spooler which you can thread onto a spool and then use it to, to rewind typewriter ribbons onto another spool. I keep a pair of black uh, gloves. Oh yes, that's handy. And I keep a set of two tweezers so that you can handle the ribbon without getting ink on your fingers. Yeah, because I always get ink on my yeah. fingers. <laughs> and then I keep an, a mascara brush that is good for cleaning, making spot cleaning oh, of things, yeah. right? Like things that get hung up or whatever. Like typically, like the the auto reversing mechanism of the typewriter spools, right? Sometimes they need to be cleaned, and then really uh, sometimes we have people who come to our group meetings and they have typewriter ribbons that need eyelets crimped on them. Oh yeah, and yeah. I have an yeah. eyelet crimper, and I have a set of well, I have some miscellaneous colored eyelets here, and I have also have some more here that I bought from the craft store but these are all kinds of eyelet crimpers that you can get at the you know local craft stores and I leave a little tie wrap on it so that it'll fit back in the bag in a closed condition and uh, I also bring a few typewriter ribbons yep these are from Bob Marshall typewriter muse so what about you? Do you got any typewriter tools? I do, and one of them you mentioned about for cleaning. Oh yeah. One thing I do have it comes with the Swiss Army knife is a nice. If I had a fingernail, I could get it out. Oh, a pin, a straight a pin, a straight. And pin. what this is very good for is when your E or your A or your S starts to clog up, you can get in there and. Oh, that's right for cleaning, cleaning out the out type. The yeah, so you're impressing, cool. I mean, which it seems like all of those smaller opening letters seem to always get clogged up to a That's certain true. degree. That's true. But the typewriter tool I do have, I carry, uh, as you mentioned, a um, new ribbon. A new ribbon, yes. Yeah, so this is a new old stock ribbon, but that's where your typewriter winder would be handy yes. because you do have to wind this on the spool. Okay, right, exactly. And so that's, that's important, especially when you have a power, a atomic power writer. Atomic power writer. With a, yeah. uh, um, radioactive spools. Oh, oh, of course, yeah. You might even want to use the tweezers. You might even want to use the tweezers yeah, for that, exactly. True. And then the uh, the other thing that even if you're not doing creative writing that I have, and this goes with my Estherbrook pen, is a Estherbrook labeled book prop. Oh, a, a book a book prop to keep a book open. And it looks like open. a fountain pen nib style. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty neat. So that's when you need to write something or refer to something. Oh, yeah, you have that book prop yeah, next yeah. to the typewriter and you can right. reference it. And, and then um, and then what I did do, which is really a kind of handy thing, this has to be, go back to mailing stuff, is that I have an old typewriter tin and this goes to the atomic area because it yeah, has B-52s on the front. Of course, yes, yeah, B-52s. You know, why you would have a typewriter tin with B-52s on the front, unless you have an atomic pow power Well, writer. of course. Well, this is Carter's Guardian, and and so we don't know if Carter was actually a pilot. We don't know that. But no, but that was an uh, ink manufacturer, <laughs> okay. of course, the Carter's Ink. Yes. And uh, and what's in there is I keep uh, oh, uh, the stamps. Stamps for your postage stamps. For the post stamps. Oh, very stamps. cool. Well, yeah. that's pretty neat. Um, I think the only other, well, I have a couple other things. Let's see. I do have a a uh, type 
Rider eraser. This is a Fa Faber Castell. That's a good one. Perfection 7058B typewriter racing pencil with the brush. Right? Yes. Very important. I have a green, um, you know, Bic fountain ballpoint pen. I don't know why I have that. It works. It works. That's right. Oh, we have. Um, I do have correction tape, right? I've lately been trying to learn to type with my correction, with my errors, oh, and just type wow. above them, X amount and type above them. But I do have our membership tags oh, to yes. the Albuquerque Typewriter Society with little pins on the back. And um, then I have something that I, I thought I would be using more of. This is a Franklin Merriam-Webster electronic dictionary and I don't use it as much as I thought I would. Well, see, going along with that, see, that's what I have. I don't have a dictionary, but what I do have, oh. because it's sort of, is that I have uh, my 50,000 words divided and spelled. Oh, okay. So it's not a dictionary, but it's just words. That tells you how to split up the syllables that's if, right. when you come to the end of a line. For your hyphenation. For hyphenation. Proper Perfect. hyphenation. Okay, and I think the only, the last thing I have in here worth showing is antacids. Well, I'm not quite into the drugs yet, but I'll show These that These are chewable. But one thing that I know you do have and you didn't show, which oh. is actually quite important when you're typing in the wild. Oh, that's true, right? These clips. Yeah, binder clips. Binder clips for keeping the paper weighted, weighted down, down so it doesn't, the wind doesn't flap it exactly. over. Exactly. Yeah, I do and have that, a I learned that from you, yes. so that well, was here really you go. good. Yes, binder clips, bulldog clips. Those work really well. Yeah, and I, I, those are really good. Now, my drug, my drug of choice is then we just have scotch. <laughs> okay, yes. You know, we have, you, know, you got to carry your flask of scotch, <laughs> and then you have your oh, cigars to go with of it. Of course you do, you know, right? You got that, and, all that, and so. <laughs> well, on that happy note, I think we've gone on <laughs> long enough here, but I want to thank you, Kevin, for bringing coming over and showing us your writer's bag kit and all that and anyways happy writing and for you guys stay well stay creative and have yourselves a great day bye bye for now